these teams are competing for the same coaches. They're all competing for the same five guys via the Coward Global Satellite Network. Peter Schrager, NFL reporter. Okay, we may have a little breaking story here with Bruce Arians. Uh, you Give me the update on this because this is a guy that was successful in the NFL, and if I have a young quarterback, Bruce Arians, a very good coach. What are you hearing, Schrager? Yeah, it looks like Tampa Bay is a destination for Bruce Arians. Very interesting deal here. Bruce Arians retired from the Arizona Cardinals two years ago. Took the year, was with the, the CBS crew, said, the only job I'd want to consider is Cleveland. Well, until another job came running down the aisle here. But no, and honestly, this is what's interesting with Arians. They hired an outside consulting firm, and a guy named Jed Hughes is his name, and he was there, and he's supposed to vet all these candidates. And a lot of Bucks fans, people around the league, are rolling their eyes saying, you hired an outside firm for a high six-figure fee, and you end up with Bruce Arians? I mean, is that really something you needed to hire a firm for? I'm told the firm looked into all the different things that could be coming up with Bruce Arians, which means health concerns, different red flags with how his time ended with Arizona. Comes up clean, comes out fine. The question is, when can they hire him? Because technically, he retired from the Arizona Cardinals, still had another year on his contract. It looks like all hurdles are going to be left over, and it looks like Bruce Arians will be the next Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach. Jameis Winston, the young cornerback, and I will tell you the connection here. Jason Light, the GM of the Buccaneers, was in Arizona for many years with Steve Keim, the GM of the Arizona Cardinals. When you go to things like the Combine, the owners' meeting, everyone just hangs. It's a big hang session. Bruce Arians got to know Jason Light very well just from a social setting. When it all came to be, it looks like he will be the next quarterback for Jameis Winston or the next coach for that quarterback, Jameis Winston. Okay, Matt LaFleur won. I mean, Tennessee made the playoffs without him. Their stats offensively went down with him. Uh, he goes to Aaron Rodgers. You know, he's been a coordinator once. That's a big boy job. Aaron's 35 and has a strong point of view. What do you know about Matt LaFleur? What are people saying in the league about the new Packer coach? Yeah, I've gotten to know Matt very well the last few years. He was Kyle Shanahan's quarterback's coach in Atlanta, left to be Sean McVay's offensive coordinator in L.A. Interesting thing last offseason. So, McVay was the head coach. LaFleur was the offensive coordinator. The Tennessee Titans say, we want to interview Matt LaFleur as our head coach. McVay says, of course, you can go and do that. That's fine. Doesn't get the job, but then they say, we'd like you to be our offensive coordinator. And in the NFL, you are not usually allowed to just take a lateral move. It has to be a promotion. McVay said, if you can make some more money and call the plays there in Tennessee, I'm going to let you out of your contract and go and work for those guys. He does that and now is the head coach of Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. One note on the floor, because I've gotten to know this guy. He is not a pushover. I'm at the table a lot of times with Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay, and LaFleur is at the table, whether it be the Combine or somewhere where everyone's hanging, and he can bust chops with those guys. He could also talk X's and O's. He goes to Tennessee where Mike Vrabel is as, I guess, I want to say alpha a coach as there is, a former linebacker, a macho man, a guy that you really look at the defensive side of the ball. And LaFleur, a 38-year-old guy, was able to go head-to-head with him and voice his opinion. I say all that to say this, Colin. He will intellectually challenge Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers is not getting a buddy or a do-boy that he could just walk all over because he's only four years older. No, no, no. This is a guy who's going to challenge him and every day have something that's going to have Aaron Rodgers thinking, okay, how can I step up to that challenge? I think it's a fascinating hire from this point alone. This was the only head coaching job interview Matt LaFleur was given. Just one the Green Bay Packers, and they were so confident that in the room this guy was better than Gase, better than McDaniels, a better fit than any of those offensive gurus, that we are going to hire him as our first coach off the board. Really interesting. He got no other, uh, no, no one else asked for an interview with Matt LaFleur, just the Packers, and he is the first coach off the board. Okay, I'm just going to give you teams. Give me a sentence on who you think the coach is. New York Jets. I think the New York Jets are either going to be Mike McCarthy Cliff Kingsbury or your wild card, Matt Rule, who is the Baylor head coach, who is a wild card to the highest order. This is a guy that everyone loves in the NFL. Okay, Arizona. Yeah, I think it's Zach Taylor, the quarterback's coach for the Arizona for the LA Rams, if it's not Kingsbury. I know Kingsbury right now, as we're speaking, Colin is in Arizona. Last night he had dinner with the Jets and their ownership, took a flight, is now in Arizona. He's meeting with the Cardinals. I got to say, Kingsbury, I would be very surprised if he doesn't have an NFL head coaching job after the next few weeks. Couldn't win in the Big 12 with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, whatever. Okay, Denver Broncos. Talk about it. Let's do it. Let's talk Kingsbury. Well, because I mean, I the, guy, the guy literally commits to USC. I'm old school. 
you shake hands, you sign a contract, I'm there for at least a year. And everybody said, well, if the other job, when I got hired at FS1, I had lunch with management. And I looked him in the eye and I said, I'm taking the job here. I, I didn't even have a contract. That's what you do when you look somebody in the eye. You, you, you just, you commit to people. You commit to your wife. You commit to your boss. You commit to a company. Kingsbury commits for an hour to a college job and he's, he's flirting around the next hour with NFL teams. You know how much I respect your opinion, and I also respect your take. You were a star at ESPN, and you're leaving to be a star at FS1. That's cool. Kingsbury is the offensive coordinator of a college team, and he has a chance to be a head coach of an NFL team. That's the equivalent of one of the production assistants at your show coming across to you and saying, Colin, I got this great opportunity to host a show on CBS, and you being like, no. I wouldn't let him go. I, I wouldn't. You wouldn't let him go? No. Well, that's some, that, is some, that is some statement, Colin. I <laughs> no, feel like... Hey, Goulet's tried to get out of his... Me, my my show for four years, I won't let him go. Yeah, you know what's funny? <laughs> the edit, the, these rules are so twisted to me, too. The NFL has to go to USC to ask for permission, and USC and Lynn Swan can say no. What kind of twisted world is this? If a college wanted to hire any NFL person, the NFL can't block them from doing that. It is a one-way road. I hear what you're saying about commitment, and in the Josh McDaniels case, you can make the argument. But if you're talking about a college coordinator job, and an NFL head coaching job, I don't even think that's apples to apples. I think that's apples to uh, to the greatest orange of all time. I can't compare the two. Okay, finally, you're going to be at the Eagles-Saints game. Lucky you. Uh, you know, everybody, Vegas, nobody likes Philadelphia. We have an interesting situation here where Foles with the Eagles <laughs> spreads the ball around a little bit. Wentz is the better talent. Foles is winning more. They're going to have to make a decision after this season. If they go to New Orleans and win, Shregs, holy Lord. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going to keep Wentz, right? Even if Foles wins in New Orleans, right? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. If I said, I, I, This is where I'm, I'm torn. If Nick Foles goes on, and let's say forget New Orleans, he beats New Orleans, beats the Rams or the Cowboys, and then wins a Super Bowl – you can't get rid of a two-time Super Bowl MVP quarterback. Like, you can't. You just can't. And if you're Carson Wentz's case, they love Carson Wentz. And I know those Eagles guys and their whole mantra to me with this discussion. It's like they won't even have it. They're like, let's get one week at a time. Yeah, eventually, though, you do have to have that conversation. Yes, yes. Wentz got hurt at North Dakota State. He got hurt with the Eagles once. Yeah. He's got hurt with the Eagles twice. This is the third time. If Wentz goes on this run, he's 30 years old. I mean, if Wentz falls, it's not a crazy decision to say, as much as we love Carson Wentz, maybe we go with the other guy. But I don't think it's going to get to that point. I think Carson Wentz is most likely the quarterback of the future. But, Colin, every single time Nick Foles pulls one of these rabbits out of his oh hat my God. and continues to win, that discussion becomes more and more legitimate, and it becomes more and more in Nick Foles' favor. Yeah, no. And, Fai, by the way, you were on Patrick Mahomes way before I was. Uh, you kept telling me in camp, you're like, this kid's going to tear the league up. And you had all this exclusive inside video stuff. I don't even know where you got the handheld stuff. Probably somebody, <laughs> some covert spy. It's a Pruder film. Probably it's like Belichick yeah. was at the Chiefs practice or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so so you must really love the Chiefs this weekend. Don't you worry a little bit about the pressures on them. Colts house money. They haven't played well in the last month. Andy struggled in the playoffs. They're a little tight in Kansas City, No. Colin, you want to hear a crazy stat? The Chiefs are 0-6, their last six home playoff games. Oh Not playoff games, home play. The last time they won a home playoff game, their quarterback was Joe Montana. So when I tell you that there is scar tissue and there is <laughs> doubt and there is fear, uh, this Chiefs crowd and this Chiefs fan base has so many nerves going into this game. The difference is none of those teams, whether it was Elvis Gerback or Steve Bono or Alex Smith, had this thing of beauty under quarterback. I'm telling you, this guy under center is the difference maker. I feel like this is the year they expunge all the demons and they get rid of all the curses Patrick Mahomes is the first time they've ever had an MVP at quarterback. And if you're the MVP and you're the true future of this franchise, you're going to have to get over a lot of challenges. One of them is this ridiculous history of home playoff losses. I would be shocked, shocked, if the Colts came in there and beat them on Sh Saturday. Schrager, you're great. Thanks, buddy. I love you, Colin. You're the man. All right. Take care, buddy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.